Okay, my name is Richard Pena. I'm a professor of film studies at Columbia University. In the 1970s, I first saw uh, some of Otar's films and really, really liked them. And over the years, I've gotten to know him somewhat because I worked at the New York Film Festival for 25 years and we showed a number of his films and he came uh, a couple of times to New York. So, and I've seen him in Paris and whatever, very lovely man. Uh, then over the years, I got to see films by other Georgian filmmakers. And I always knew that within the constellation of what we used to call Soviet cinema, Georgian cinema had a very special character who was really very much its own kind of cinema, different than one saw in a lot of the other republics. And, uh, you know, always wanted to know more. I, I was glad that MoMA finally got their Georgian series that they had been promising to do for many years off the ground uh, just this year. My, my very good and unfortunately late friend, Yuta Jensen, who put together the series at MoMA, literally had been talking about that series since the 1980s. So for many years, I would kind of kid her and say, what's that? She'd say, you know, there's a war going on or, or different things about why she couldn't get it together. So the only reason that I didn't go after a Georgian retrospective was because U2 was doing one. And, even, and in fact, a couple of times, knowing the kind of work that I did, because I did a lot of work when I was at Lincoln Center on Russian and Soviet cinema, uh, I was in contacted by people from Georgia asking would I be interested in doing such a series. And I said, yes, but no, because my friend Yuta Jensen has been working on this for years, so I'm not gonna get in her way. So I was glad it eventually worked out for Yuta and she was able to do it. I teach uh, mainly a lot of classes on international cinema. We have at Columbia a kind of four-part history of cinema cycle. Then I will often do on a kind of three-year cycle, uh, I'll do, for example, a class on Latin American cinema, then a class the next, next spring on Chinese cinema, and then the spring after that a class on Arab and African cinema. And then I repeat the cycle. And you here have a good situation, just somehow naturally you, you know, had you opened yourself to you know, women being in the film industry. That's simply not the case in most of the world. You know, most of the world that you know, men still overwhelmingly dominate, uh, especially the director's chair. For example, it was in the 1970s that first countries like, I believe, Holland and Norway and a few others set up separate funds for women filmmakers. And I remember at the time there was a lot of complaints about that, but you can almost see that as a kind of remedial situation. In places where you have almost no female filmmakers, this is just a way of trying to create some. It's one of the questions that I tried to ask at the end, is the ultimate aim of women's cinema to do away with the category? Do we want to look forward to a day where there's no such thing as women's cinema? There's just cinema, and some of it's made by men, and some of it's made by women. How long do we need to keep this category going? You know, there are certainly people who feel uncomfortable with the category and would like it not to exist anymore. Well, I mean, I think the idea of an independent cinema, first of all, really grew out of the idea that there was this very dominant cinema in the United States and people tried to look for alternatives to it. So the idea was to always create parallel cinemas, cinemas that were not what Hollywood did. And that's not at all the spirit I find in the last 25, 30 years of American independent cinema, I think they're all auditions to get into Hollywood, you know? So, you know, America makes a lot of films, as you know. I mean, who knows how many feature films are made every year? Nobody really does. So I think you can find fringes of cinema that still have a kind of, to me, more independent character. But if you go by Sundance, South by Southwest, all the sort of official independent cinema, it's only low budget, it's not independent. I mean, it has the exact same type of narrative. It's gonna be distributed in the same places. It uses the same stars, the same techniques. What's independent about that, you know? It's not like looking at independent films from the 30s, 40s, 50s, up until the 60s, when in fact these films were really distinct from what Hollywood was offering. Now they're just low budget versions. And in fact, they're usually not as good as what Hollywood does. That's, that's the sad thing. I think if you're talking about the independent cinema, it's like when you have a structure and you have some filmmakers who very consciously stay out of that structure. And I think that existed probably up until the 1970s. And then after that, I think very gradually, and certainly by the time we get to 1990, the big success of Sex, Lies, and Videotape, because people began to say, hey, we can really make money with these things. So they really started getting into the marketing and distribution of the, those so-called independents much more. I would always say for me, there's some kind of 
continuum where on one side you would say tremendous formal innovation and the other sort of fantastic social relevance. The best films meet somewhere in the middle, but sometimes there are films that are so interesting formally that even though maybe they're not about much, you like them, or films that are so relevant and important politically, you want to show them so. But I always like to think that films fall somewhere in the middle, the best films. There's no rule for festivals. Every festival has to be looked at with regards to their situation. Uh, you know, the question you have to ask is, is the Tbilisi festival the kind of festival we want for Tbilisi, or do we want something else? For example, I worked at the New York Film Festival, which you probably know something about. Um, that's a very small festival. We only show about 25 films in a given year. Uh, many people have said, why don't you show like Toronto? I don't think there's necessarily a need for that kind of festival in New York. I think there's so much going on in New York to do those massive 300 film festivals would, you know, I think things get lost. So I, I, that, was, that was never something that attracted me. So I think every site has to say, okay, what kind of festival do I want? If you're running the Cleveland Film Festival, you probably want to have a very big one because that's going to be the only chance that those films have to come to Cleveland. But in New York, you don't worry about that because if we don't show them, then MoMA will show them, or Film Forum will show them, or BAM will show them, or Anthology will show them, someone will show them. So I mean, rather than load up a festival, better to just really focus on what you want to do and let other people continue to uh, show films. Thank you.